Do you know how to read? Of course you do. You read in class and at home and in libraries. But how well do you read? For all of us, there is room for improvement in reading. Almost all of us have reading problems of one kind or another. Here's a boy who reads so slow case is similar to hundreds of others. Suppose we call him Peter. This girl's problem is that she reads too fast to understand what she is reading. And there are a lot of people who have similar problems. Let's call this girl Joan. And this boy, Billy. You can see what his trouble is. He points every word and pronounces it with his lips. And many of us do the very same things. Every Monday afternoon in this school, students who want to improve their reading, students like Peter and Joan and Billy, can bring their reading problems to the school librarian, Miss Baker. In her conference room, Miss Baker devotes this time to what she calls corrective reading. First of all, what were you reading in the library? We had a history assignment to read. And it was very hard, too. I'll never be able to read it. Well, I think the first thing we ought to do is to develop an interest in what we're reading. That is, uh, read along in search of something. What do you mean, Miss Baker? I mean we should ask ourselves questions about the things we read and then look for answers or look for solutions to problems. A topic can be interesting if we show an interest, too. But I'd be more interested if I had to read about something I like, like baseball, for instance. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do right now. I'd like each of you to come over to the bookshelf and find something that you really want to read. Here's a book on furniture and interior decorating. This is exactly what I like. Oh, I think this would be baseball. Golly, this looks good. Radio's my hobby, Miss Baker. I'd like to try this one on radio mechanics. It is a fact that if a reader is interested in his subject, he reads better. Interest in what we are reading helps us to solve our mechanical difficulties more easily. The card that Peter will read is a sample page from a textbook used by pupils about his age. By watching Peter closely, Miss Baker can see that he reads only one word at a time. He has not developed what is called a wide perception span. Perception span is the width of the printed material which our eyes take in at one time. Peter was slow because he saw and understood only one word at a time, like this. With a little practice, we can gradually increase our perception span. It helps, too, to remember the phrase just read, to think about the phrases to come. Not only does this increase our reading speed, but it also helps us think words in this. It shouldn't be hard for Peter to increase his perception span. He can try it with a book on sports he was anxious to read. When Joan is given the same sample material to read, she races through it, moving too fast and using no regular system of scanning the lines of type. She reads rapidly, but does she read carefully? Joan, did you understand all the words on the page? Well, not all the hard ones. I had to skip over a few of them, but I got a pretty good idea of what I read. Well, sometimes the meaning of a difficult word can be guessed from the context. That is, the phrase or the sentence in which the word is used. But if the context doesn't give you any clue to the meaning, 
You shouldn't go on without looking up the word in the dictionary and finding out what it means. Do you think you'll be able to read the book on interior decorating you selected? Oh, yes. I really want to learn all about styles and homes and furniture. Well, you're going to meet a lot of new words, such as Chippendale and Architrave and, oh, many others. Promise me you won't race by them. Oh, no, Miss Baker. If I'm going to be an interior decorator, I'll have to learn all those words. This time I'm going to read more carefully and more slowly. By the way, that's a point all of us should try to remember. The speed of our reading depends upon the material we're reading. Story material, and that includes such things as novels and your favorite comic strips, can and should be read more quickly. But factual material, your textbooks and uh, your guide on interior decorating, for instance, Joan, should be read more slowly. So let's all try to remember our purpose in reading, whether we want a general idea or specific information. Miss Baker's next problem is to help Billy overcome a childish reading habit. Billy points to each word and pronounces it in a whisper. Old John lived in British East Africa. Thomas and I and our good plane adventure in quest of most... Because of the time he loses in pointing and whispering, it takes Billy twice the average time required to read the sample page. Using his finger this way slows his reading, and moving his hand back and forth across the page is annoying. So Billy tries not using his finger to follow the lines. It's hard at first, but he manages to remember. But he is still moving his lips, which means that he can read no faster than he can pronounce each word. The thing he must do is his lips still and concentrate on reading as he should, with his eyes. Miss Baker illustrates a bit more with his book on radio. The book Billy selected is a good one because it has a lot of visual aids, illustrations, charts, and diagrams, which will help him to visualize what he is reading. All of us must visualize what we are reading. We must remember that printed words are symbols for real things. We must make mental pictures of the action or process or event the words described. So if you really want to learn about radio, you can train your eyes to move along in search of the information. I think that's something all three of you should remember. We have to want to read before we can get the most out of our reading. Well, it's easy enough to be interested in our favorite subjects like baseball and radio and interior decorating, but uh, what about the subjects that we don't like? <laughs> well, that's a good question, Peter. It's not as easy to read things we don't like. But if we can improve our reading methods on material that we like, shouldn't we be able to apply the same procedure with any material? That sounds logical, Peter. But I'm interested in famous baseball players. That's a lot different from history. Oh, I'm not so sure, Peter. Have you ever thought of history as a series of famous people? Of men and women with unusual abilities? No, that's an idea. Each of you might be able to create an interest in history by interpreting it in your own way. You mean I can find interior decorating in my history? Yes, you could watch for styles in architecture and changes in costume and home furnishings. What about radio, Miss Baker? Well, radio is only one of a long series of inventions. You might think of the story of America as a series of great inventions that have helped so much to build it. Yes, it's possible for all of us to develop an interest in what we read. When we do this, we can solve our individual reading problems much more easily. I'd like you to read your new books, and then we'll discuss them when you come back next Monday afternoon. And will you all try to remember to correct your reading troubles as you read? Would you, Peter? Yes, and I'm going to practice increasing my per perception span. I'm not going to read fast. <laughs> I mean, not so fast that I don't understand what I'm reading. And, uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to look up all the words I don't understand and make sure I know how they're being used. I'm going to get over the habit of pointing to words and pronouncing them. 
Good. And remember, we've only just begun. Reading is just like any other skill. We've got to practice reading and practice it constantly. <laughs> Next week, we can see what we can do about that very, very difficult history book. <laughs> <laughs>